in most cases um, it would be possible for an occupant of the fire room if they weren't intimate with the fire, if they're sitting on the other side of the room for the fire uh, with, a, with a typical domestic um, bulb activated sprinkler system they could uh, sit there throughout the whole experience of the sprinkler being activated and going off they'd get very damp but they would be effectively uninjured um, and this illustrates here the very limited damage that you get in a typical domestic lounge when a uh, domestic sprinkler system is, is activated. But the big protection of course comes for people who are in a remote location elsewhere in the building. Obviously, hopefully, um, we've extinguished the fire at a very early stage, or a relatively early stage, so the fire is out. If we fail to extinguish the fire, at least we're controlling it, which means that the mass loss rate and the rate of plume development is greatly reduced and the heat release rate is greatly reduced compared to what we would have had without the sprinkler system. Not only that, but because we're knocking down the temperature in the fire compartment, we're taking the energy out of that plume. So instead of the plume pouring out and, th and rapidly filling upstairs, we have, if you like, a, a much lazier plume that's not going to spread so effectively. And so this gives us a lot of protection to the uh, escape route uh, remote from the actual fire room, room of fire origin. There are one or two uh, limitations uh, for sprinkler systems um, that it would be nice if there would, we could get around, at least in some applications. They tend to be really quite heavily engineered. Um, with quite a lot of pipe work, tanks, and knock-on effects for, for water supplies like water mains and water supply systems for the water authorities. And for, for some years now I've been thinking that with modern technology we, we ought to be able to do something a bit better. Surely we could have some kind of system, we could envisage a system which um, would be able to detect a fire at a very early stage and then maybe scan a room in such a way that it could actually pick out the seat of the fire when the fire is very small and then deliver a very small amount of some extinguishing agent like water or water mist onto that fire and knock it down and hopefully extinguish it or at least control it from a very early stage. If we could develop a system like that it could have the benefits that we wouldn't need a, a large amount of extinguishing agent maybe a few litres even of water for example would be enough. Uh, and that would then mean that we wouldn't need uh, all the infrastructure and pipe work that goes with typical uh, sprinkler systems. And, and not only that, but we could afford to activate such a system at a very low level of threat, if you like, because the consequences of such a system being activated could be uh, mainly just a small wet patch on the carpet. Whereas if you activate a traditional sprinkler system, you tend to get quite a lot of water damage, although, although they offer a lot of protection and property protection beyond the area of origin, you do get some damage. So it would be nice if we could do something like that. And this is why I've agreed to speak about these issues for plumers, because I'm really quite interested in the approach that they've taken, that they've independently come up with something rather similar to the concept that's been in the back of my mind some years but of course gone much further in actually developing the systems that you can see if you look at the other information on their, their website.